My name is Musa Adnan, that's John Fontaine. This is Rerooted, and here's what's coming up next. People say, oh, how many shahadas you had? I said, I don't even count shahadas. I don't think about that because it's not mine. Allah guides them. Do you know what I mean? I judge the success of my dawah by how many people I've told, how many people I've successfully conveyed the message to. Yes. The guidance isn't mine. It's nothing to do with me. You had come across magic and the reality of magic, etc. And that eventually led you to becoming a Muslim, right? Um, SubhanAllah. I asked a question to Tim Humble and I thought he, his answer was on point, bro. I said to the Sheikh, I said, Sheikh, how do you differentiate between sihr and mental health? He said, it doesn't matter. He said, the cure is the same. He said, recite the Quran, the cure is the same. Allahu Akbar. I'm like, subhanAllah, That's Sheikh, that so was deep. deep. Bro, I tried to focus on non-Muslim dawah more than education for born Muslims. Yeah. You know, I know some people focus on that, which is good. But I have to give dawah to my tribe, bro. I have to give dawah to the white people. Who's going to call into Islam, bro? Am I going to expect Pakistanis to come or Arabs or Malaysians to come and call my people to Islam? Really? You know, Surprise. who's going to do it, bro? Assalamu alaikum. John Fontaine. How are you, bro? Assalamu alaikum, bro. How's things? How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Very well. The Fountain. John Fontaine. Himself. <laughs> he hates it when people call him that. So don't call him John Fountain. Uh, some history, some background. MashaAllah, myself and John, we've traveled together multiple places. Pakistan. Pakistan twice. Really? Once. Once. No, but I've been twice. You've been twice, but no. not with me. Once, once with me. Once with me. Yeah. Africa. Malawi. M yeah, that's in Africa. No, but <laughs> we went to y Uganda, didn't we? As well? Yeah, I went to Uganda. Yeah, Kampala. But not with you. <laughs> this is supposed to be about what we, where we went I'm together. trying to remember Af I, I'm, Africa, I'm Malawi. thinking of your dad Pakistan yeah, yeah, Africa, so. Malawi We've yeah. done uh, New Zealand as well New Zealand Germany Germany That's one you went yeah, That was funny, yeah Yeah yeah. That was sure. a funny one Yeah that, Yeah, Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah So, Alhamdulillah, we've travelled together Yeah, I've known you since you were younger Yeah Had many laughs Had many jokes Controversial moments Alhamdulillah, it's, it's been a it's been a pleasure. Most recently, though, and this is what I wanted to start off the podcast by yeah. speaking about. Uh, for people that don't know yourself, etc., uh, mashallah, you're you're someone who gives dawah online. Uh, you attend events around the world uh, with many mashallah big speakers, etc. Um, you currently live in Africa, yeah, right. Obviously, you're in UK because of the whole quarantine thing. Yeah, um, I'm gonna make it easy for all of us and yourself. I mean, but most recently. This is actually where we both came from. That's why we're both actually. Well, I live here, but you're stuck here. Mm. We came from New Zealand. Alhamdulillah, we were in New Zealand. How did you find New Zealand? Yeah, it was good. Um, the first time I went was last year um, after the Christchurch events. Yes. Um, as you know, what happened, and I just felt the need to go over there and you know just be there, basically. Most definitely. You know, it's so, so far away. No one's no one was going. It's quite expensive to go there. But Alhamdulillah, my brother offered to pay for the ticket, the flight. And I managed to go there, um, visit the Muslims there, just kind of show solidarity and uh, kind of help uh, the local Muslims kind of engage with the non-Muslims. Yeah. So, and then we went, uh, was it February? For the anniversary, March. Yeah, I think it was February. March, yeah. And we, uh, yeah, we did that tour. I did a yeah. tour with uh, Islam. Voice of Islam. Voice of Islam. And also yeah. Ayira is a part of that as well. Yeah. And then I met you in Christchurch. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. How did you find it? Alhamdulillah, I enjoyed it, bro. I enjoyed mm. it because I always enjoy going to a new country. I can't lie, I had certain um, uh, perceptions of New Zealand. Mm. It's Let's just say it's it's more third world than I imagined it to be. Does that make third sense? Third world? Yeah, but does that make sense? It's no, not as it first world. It's not as first world as I thought it would be. What do you mean? What do you mean, bro? It's exactly like England. No, nah, it's not, man. It is, bro. It's not, bro. The city is very different. Did you go to Auckland? Yeah. It's like Canada, bro. Bro, it's very villagey. Oh, yeah. I mean, once you get outside of, like, in Christchurch. No, you didn't go to Auckland, did you? I did, I did. I yeah, did. Christchurch. Like, but even in Auckland, yeah. as soon as you leave the city, it becomes very yeah, village-like. Yeah, it's like Wales. 
Yes. Yeah, it feels like Wales. Exactly. So is exactly. Wales like yeah. third world as well? Yeah. No, no, is but it, you know what I mean. I'm just saying that. Like, is it? No, it's not. Okay. I'm what, not, about, what about Scotland? <laughs> I don't mean to say New Zealand. <laughs> really I actually really love New, De- New Zealand. No, it's nice. So the Maori yeah. people. And this is the thing, actually, from a Dawa perspective. Mm. Alhamdulillah, obviously, we were both there for Dawa, yeah. right? Uh, from a Dawa perspective, it's amazing how when you go to certain lands, bro, mm. you come across people that you've never seen before mm. and you never perhaps even knew existed. Mm. Like a whole race of people, like yeah, the Maori people. Yeah, the Maori. Uh, uh, the brother, um, the brother, Omar, Omar mashallah, mashallah. Brother mashallah. Omar uh, was amongst like the first Maori mm. people I had ever met in my whole life. Yeah. SubhanAllah. Yeah. And you go there, they got their own culture. It's beautiful, man. It's, it, beautiful, it's man. amazing. And, and yeah. it's, this is like the creation of Allah, where you're literally the last place mm. on, 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 if you look at the map, mm. New Zealand is the last country you're going to go to, basically. Yeah. There's a s- few tiny islands after, mm. but yeah, country, yeah. like a big country, yeah. New Zealand is the last country, yeah, right? Yeah. And subhanAllah, bro, it's different. Mm. It's different, mm. scenic, Allahu mm. Akbar. Mm. Um, how did you find the da'wah? In New Zealand The first year I went Straight after the Christchurch event Bro It was the best Dawah I've ever done in my life If really? I'm going to be honest Seriously bro And you've given Dawah Around the world Yeah But yeah. there was just Something unique The whole country Were ready to si- Sincerely I believe Hear about Islam mm. Like they felt guilty They felt sorry You have to imagine New Zealand is like Like you said It's like a village bro Yeah It's like Wales They yeah. don't ha- even have A motorway bro <laughs> the, the most they have is like a dual carriageway, right? Yeah. And the people are like very village like. So for something like this to take place in Christchurch, where, you know, somebody has gone and killed like 50 people in it's one go, life. this is like, they can't imagine something like this, yeah. you know? So it actually brought the country together. Yeah. And they felt like they wanted to prove to the Muslims that. They they're not like that. Yeah, you know, they felt yeah. guilty. Yeah, so I crying, was just, bro, crying. Yeah, like it's bro, it's not just like no, but bro, like you seen it like a year on. Exactly. I'll be yeah. honest with you, like when I, when you were there, it wasn't the same. for me. It it had gone, and even you could see the benefit, right? So you imagine what it was like a year before when it actually when happened, it just yeah. happened, right? There were thousands and thousands of people outside the masjid, bro. I'm not exaggerating. SubhanAllah. Did you see the flowers in the pictures? It was just full of flowers outside. Like thousands and thousands of people were attending all the mosques all over the country to show solidarity with with what happened. And they were just laying flowers. And then I got there just as... I got there just almost two weeks after the incident. And at that time, they'd removed the carpet, they'd uh, refurbished the mosque. They were still waiting for the new carpet, but they started to let Muslims to come and pray. Wow, okay. So I spoke to the police officer and I said, you know, I gave him some tea, you know, butted him up a bit, you know. And I said, look, you know, uh, I'm from England and I just want to start bringing, you know, small groups of five, ten people into the, mos- the mosque, uh, you know, because they're, they're grieving. The non-Muslims were outside crying, bro. So, and the Muslims are not really crying because alhamdulillah we know the reality of the the people who die in Jummah right so the police officer said no problem you know so I started to take like small groups of 10 people 5 to 10 people you know into the masjid we'll sit them down and we'll just tell them about Islam bro and we'll just tell them look we're, we're, we're like obviously we said what's happened but the reality of it is that we believe that they're going to a better place, you know, in our religion. And we, we use that opportunity to give them dawah. And it was amazing, bro. Like, it was a different feeling totally. But a, a year on, it wasn't the same. You mm-hmm. know, it'd been lost because people forget very easily, bro. SubhanAllah. Yeah, I mean, even a year on, I mean, people are still coming and giving flowers and... As, as you say bro it's true I can't imagine how it was when it actually happened subhanAllah it definitely it felt weird that that happened mm. in New Zealand do you know what I mean yeah. because New Zealand is so it's they're nice they're very nice people they're mm. genuinely very well, good people well he was from Australia not that that says anything he okay. was an extremist yeah. you know but yeah. but they were they are people all over the world like that bro yeah, not yeah. just New Zealand not yeah. just in Australia in England yeah. there are extremists not just not just Christian extremists there are Muslim extremists there's Extremists in every uh, walks of life, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's why it's important that we as Muslims, we actually uh, make sure that we convey the correct message and teach the Muslims the correct yeah. Islam. This is the thing, bro, as part of Dawah, of mm. course, 
part of dawah is clearing up misconceptions. Yeah. Part of dawah is clearing up misconceptions mm. that people may have. You know, the Definitely. Prophet ﷺ was so cautious. You think about this is the Prophet of Allah, right? Where an incident happened in, in, in his lifetime. And one of the companions wanted to, you know, deal with the incident, mm. right? The Prophet ﷺ said, you know, he expressed to him, don't do this. Mm. Because, and this is what the Prophet ﷺ was mm. alluding to. Mm. Do you want people to say that Muhammad does this, mm-hmm. right? Sallallahu So he cared about his perception amongst the people. Yeah. He cared about his perception yeah. amongst the people. And today, it's very, very sad mm. that we come across many Muslims who who don't don't care mm. yep. about the way they're being perceived, yep. Yep. right? This is very important, bro. It's very important, bro. Sp- bro, even the Kaaba. You know, that's I think that's what he was referring to, right? When he said. You know, he would have rebuilt the Kaaba on its original footings, right? If it wasn't for the fact that he was worried about what the pagans would have said about him. That's another that, incident. You know, because we're like, yeah. we have to think about how we're perceived. You know, also when he was walking with his wife. Yes. Subhanallah. Yeah. He made sure he clarified to his companions, this is my wife. And that's don't not even to non-Muslims, yeah. that's to his companions. But these days, Muslims are like, bro, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I don't like to speak bad about Muslims, right? But we need to be the best character, bro. Seriously, I'm I'm talking to myself, right? But bro, I was driving in the Muslim area recently. Bro, they're just driving, cutting me off, and you've got to understand that, like, when a non-Muslim sees you with your beard, with your hijab, they just blame it on Islam, bro. They're just like, you know, that these Muslims. That's they don't, they they don't are, say yeah. these Pakistanis or these Arabs. They say these Muslims. That's what they say, bro. So we have to remember that when we're rocking the beard. When we have the hijab, we're representing our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We're representing the deen, bro. Bro, don't we see that some of the most dirtiest areas in the UK are Muslim areas? Mm. Are Muslim areas. You go mm. to some areas in London, you see the spit mm. all over the floor. Yeah. What is this? You see yeah. litter all over the floor. You see mm. chicken wings on the floor. Mm. Seriously. Yeah. You see that near the masjid. You mm. see uh, guys driving around, bla- mm. blaring music. Oh, you don't understand. Mm. And and this is the thing Even if we look at it From the Quranic perspective And subhanAllah Of course this is all To do with da'wah What we're talking about mm. Right Because what da'wah What calling What what perception Does that give to mm. Non-Muslims That's About true. Islam Right They mm. they walk They walk into A Muslim area It smells There's chicken wings On the floor mm. There's uh, And then they see An uncle walking Down the street Etc mm. And he's dressed The way I'm currently dressed so how w- so now when they mm. see me walking down the street, even if I'm clean, mm. they already got that perception in, in their head now. Definitely. Because this is what they've seen before, yeah. right? Yeah. And this is the thing where we become dehumanized yeah. because of ourselves, the yeah. way that we behave yeah. with people, yeah. right? The way that we sh- uh, act and show people yeah. our mannerisms. And it's yeah. extremely upsetting, bro. Yeah. It's extremely upsetting. And this is something that um, um, I've thought about before as well, that while you... My dear brother, and, uh, brother or sister, mm. and I yeah. and whatnot are struggling in inverted commas. There's genuine people mm. that are being turned away from Islam yeah. because of yeah. our behaviors. Yeah. You know, I went to see uh, Abdurrahim Green last week, okay. and we went for, we went in the mountains. Beautiful, subhanAllah. Yeah. Some parts of the UK, and literally, there's not many Muslims in this particular area. Yeah. And I think the Muslims, some of the Muslims, just felt like going on a day out in the mountains. Yeah. And bro, I'll be honest with you. It didn't look good, you know. The some of the Muslims, you know, they were smoking. Uh, it smelled like haram things, right? Um, smoking is haram anyway, but it smelled like extra haram, you know. Um, you know, they just, it just, Subhanallah. You know, when you analyze it, when you kind of, you have to kind of look at yourself from the outside, and you have to be, uh, you have to be critical and honest. You know how uh, you said how are we be we being perceived um, by the especially living in a non-Muslim country, bro? And you know this is why this is why I focus on dawah, bro. I try to focus on non-Muslim dawah more than education for born Muslims. Yeah. You know, I know some people focus on that, which is good, but I have to give dawah to my tribe, bro. I have to give dawah to the white people. Who's gonna call into Islam, bro? Am I going to expect Pakistanis to come or Arabs or Malaysians to come and call my people to Islam? Really? You know, who's going to do it, bro? So, you know, because... John, you're not on this topic. Yeah. You've obviously, your parents are white. Yeah. 
Middle How do you class? know? <laughs> I'm joking. Sorry, but, uh, you know. My dad's ginger, but yeah. He's not Pakistani, is he? No. Are you sure? <laughs> Positive, yeah. The way, you were, the way I heard that you was eating in Pakistan, you were eating the chapli kebabs off the street <laughs> and whatnot. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but... Mm. So you uh, would you say your parents are like you're from a middle class background or no no I I'm from a if you can call it a lower class poor okay background yeah I'm from so I'm from a very very poor background okay. uh, in I, in I Manchester I don't know why you appeal to me as a middle class person not you but you mm. uh, I don't know I don't know. it's because I'm white and you've got an inferiority complex <laughs> 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 I'm joking well, listen, no so but it, I, I, how, I, I, how I'm not green martial lies is from a quite a well well off but I want to know but from from your perspective Manchester obviously yeah. you were born and raised in Manchester yeah. right yeah. Um, and obviously your parents live there etc and there's many Muslims in Manchester how do your parents uh, th- you see this perception we were yeah. speaking about I want to hear more of a personal view on this right mm. did you have times where your parents had these perceptions negative perceptions about Muslims because of the behaviours of some Muslims um, see my d- my father was a slaughterman okay is that sounds very aggressive. What does uh, that mean? <laughs> no, you know the with the sheep. Right? Okay, you know, okay. So, so the mu- but he worked for a Muslim man. Okay. Yeah. So the Muslim, uh, the sheikh or the Muslim would would kill the sheep. Okay. And then my dad would slaughter and okay. and do everything right. So it's quite a, you know, it's it's quite a working class job if you like. It's you know, yeah. it's a difficult job. You know, he still suffers from uh, the you know his past work. You know, because doing that job, you know. 30, 40 years ago was a difficult job. Yeah. It's a lot easier now with technology, etc. But he worked for a Muslim and he always spoke good things about the Muslims. Um, he, he, Even though, bro, you know, I know we always talk about how, how bad we are Muslims or whatever, but I'm telling you, bro, even like before I was a Muslim, even the most jehel Muslim, he still had something special about him, bro. Wow. He still had a bit of Norway, you know, he still had like something, you know, I'm talking about like drug dealers, I'm talking about gangsters, you know, people in nightclubs, they were Muslim, but bro, they still had something, they still had something what the non-Muslims didn't have. Hmm. And so, so even true. though, even though we're kind of, you know, being a bit critical about ourselves a purpose, as a though. community, yeah. because we're trying to give dawah to our community, to the Muslims, to tell them, look, let's fix up. But in reality, bro, alhamdulillah, we we do have uh, a lot of good things as well. 100%. You know, even even if if you're raised in a Muslim household, there's a certain amount of natural culture that you have, which is Islamic. Yeah. Even if you're not, if you if your family are not practicing Islam, you still have a lot of Islamic things in your culture, right? Especially Pakistani culture, subhanallah. So, the thing with uh, my father. They didn't have a negative view of Muslims from the perspective of manners. They had negative views from the perspective of terrorism. Mm. You know, because of nine uh, eleven and other events that happened. Obviously, with the media and everything like that, they had a lot of negative views about Islam. They thought Islam was evil. You know, terrorism, etc. So when I became a Muslim, they were worried about me. Genuinely, they had a genuine concern that I had become radicalized. And that I'm going to go and travel to one of these war-torn countries and start fighting or something, you know. But they didn't tell me straight away. I didn't realize this until later on when I realized that they had a lot of these concerns and they'd actually spoke to people who knew me to say, look, we, we, we're actually scared that he's going to basically travel and do, you know. And I had to come home and say, look, mom, like, I'm not like that. You know, and they're like, oh, yeah, you're telling us that. But they genuinely thought that I had been radicalized. So it wasn't because of bad manners. Mm. It was more because of the, you know, that type of radicalization and things like that. Mm. Mm. You have to understand, bro, Islam is a very foreign religion for English people. It just looks foreign, right? The clothes, the culture, you know, the Arabic writing, the mosques, it's, yeah. the big domes. You know, the tiles, the carpet, putting your head on the floor, washing your feet in the sink. You know, it's like, subhanAllah, like, yeah, yeah, it's very foreign. foreign, bro. It's mm. like, you know, eating with your hands, bro. Like, uh, believe it or not, I, I taught my dad how to eat like a chapati and curry with his hands the other day. For the first time. Recently. He's 74, bro. Allah Akbar. And I, I, I was just like, uh, I made some, you know, uh, what do you call it? Um, barata. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know the the, the fake one you buy and you you, yeah, you yeah. just fry it, right? The quick one. <laughs> so I made it and he's just watching me and I said, Look, try this and, and we're just eating it. And I said, Look, and he's making sandwiches, right? You know, you know, like uh he's making it like an Englishman would, right? Like you know, like this, right? Folding it. And I said, Look, Dad, just rip it off and just kind of like do it like that. Get busy. Yeah. And um he was just watching me, you know. I could see he was watching me and um but it's very foreign, bro. Eating with your hands, bro. Of course, it's clean. We know we wash our hands, we clean our hands, etc. So we, there's a lot of clearing up to do. Yeah. There's a lot of clearing yeah, up. To, there's already a barrier definitely. because it's foreign. And then you're behaving definitely. like this. Definitely. Right? It's, 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 it's something that we need to think about for yeah. sure. John, you know your story, bro? It's a very inspirational story. I remember when you was telling me about it when we were in Pakistan. This is some years ago, maybe four or five years ago. Mm. You were telling me when we were in Pakistan about your story. Um, I know you must have spoken about your story online. Mm. So I don't want to go too deep into it because people can listen to that um, on the relevant in the relevant place. Mm. But um, one of the things that was involved within your story is magic. Yeah, you had, co- you had come across magic mm. and the reality of magic, etc., and that eventually led you to becoming a Muslim, right? Um, Subhanallah. Tell me a little bit about that. You know, uh, how 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 did that like affect you? What did that make you think? Um, what actually yeah. happened? What was like the main part of it? Yeah, I would say this is one of the main things that kind of woke me up to the reality of Islam, the world of the jinn, the unseen world. Um, when I was 18, I moved, I, tr- I moved from Manchester down to London. Yeah. Um, about 17, 18, I yeah. moved to Peckham. Um, basically, where my parents live in in Manchester is like a very white, racist area. And then, about fifteen years ago, a lot of West Africans moved into the area and started to. How can I put it? Um, what's that term you use when you? Uh, is that, you know when the white people come to uh, and just take over? What do you call it, bro? Colonize. No, not colonize. Gentrified. Gentrified. Yeah. There was like an African gentrification <laughs> of this white area, bro. That must have really hurt. <laughs> I don't people. know if you can use that word for Africans uh gentrifying a white area. But that's basically what happened, right? So there was <laughs> it's like a black uh, gentrification of a white area, subhanAllah. It's quite interesting, right? So there was a, a very, very white racist area and all of a sudden lots of West Africans moved in and they bought all the shops and mashallah the area just became good, bro. Like, uh, they revived the business. You know, because white people now, they're not business people, bro. They just sit at home. They don't want to work. They go on the dole. They don't, you know. But mashallah, Africans, yeah, they, they work. They're, you know, they're entrepreneurial. And they bought all the businesses cool. and they took over, right? Yeah. And also, all the scallies, all the, you know, the, the white kind of kids on the street, these Africans wouldn't have it. They would just go out and chase them away. So they cl- they literally cleared the area up, bro. And I got friendly with uh, a brother from Sierra Leone and some Nigerians. I started to do business with them. Crazy. So eventually I moved to Peckham. So to cut a long story short, I started to do business in uh, Sierra Leone, right? And then this was, I, my friends, they used to do sihr, but they never used to call it sihr or magic. They actually thought that this was a part of Islam. So... And I know there's differences of opinion here and there about amulets and things like that. But they used to have amulets. And they used to think that there was Quran inside these amulets. But in reality, it wasn't. It was it was sihr. You know, I opened one of these amulets once and it's just numbers and uh, names of like shayateen and things like this. Horrible things, bro. And they used to believe that these things protect them from the police. Right? From the police. From the police, right? Because they used to do certain things. And they actually gave me one of these things to protect myself from the police, right? And I'll be I I carried it for maybe two years, bro, in my pocket. I carried this amulet. That was like a wallet or something or a phone to you. Yeah, bro, it was constantly in my pocket. It was like a small amulet. At the time, I didn't know what was inside, right? But these Africans just said, look, this is going to protect you from this, that and the other. And I'm like, I wasn't, I didn't believe in anything, right? I'm like, okay, just put it in my pocket. But bro, you know, Shaitan, 
he does things to make you believe that that's protecting you. So I remember one time I got pulled in Sierra Leone. The policeman pulled me, right? And he pulled out all the things in my pocket and he pulled this thing out and he went like this. <gasps> right? And it's like the thing burnt him, bro. And he said, no, no, take take your things. And he gave him all my things back no and then way. I went. So I'm now starting to get a man in this thing. I don't realize that it's not the thing that burnt him, right? Shaitan wants me to have Iman that this thing is protecting me from police. Yeah. So Shaitan came and maybe touched him or pinched him or flicked him or hit him or whispered to him. I don't know. But the bottom line was that Shaitan scared this policeman and I attributed that incident to this thing. Do you understand? Yeah. And this happened about three or four times. Bro. Subhanallah. Like another policeman once, he pulled me. Uh, and the same thing happened, bro. The same thing is like, ah. Wow. So anyone who doesn't have knowledge starts to have a man in these amulets thinking that, oh, so, you know, I'm getting power now. You know, I can just buy one of these amulets. I can do what I want. I can go and steal. I can do any crime I want. I can sell drugs. Yeah. Whatever it is. Because they, they're starting to have a man. They're starting to do shirk. And to a certain extent, shaitan will assist and Allah of course you have to understand that this is all with the permission of Allah nothing can happen without the permission of Allah yeah. but Allah allows sometimes allows evil things to happen because there's wisdom you are mis literally misguiding yourself does that make sense so bro I've seen this many many times right there's many stories I don't like to go too much into it because the point's been made but this is how Subhanallah, I, I, it was the beginning of kind of starting to have iman mm. and belief in these, these false things. Another time I went to the northern parts of Sierra Leone uh, in the jungle, it's called Kabbalah, Kabbalah, right? <laughs> and it's known as a city for Sihr. And it's very evil, bro. There's literally magicians sat in the jungle and there's people queuing to see these magicians. Now, of course, they don't call them the magicians, they call them the sheikh. And they look like Muslims. They have beards. They they dress like Muslims. They have the Quran. They have uh, you know beads. They have the hat. They look like a sheikh. And maybe they're knowledgeable. Maybe they know Arabic. Maybe they even memorize Quran. But somewhere along the line, they've learned about sihr, and they're dealing with the jinn. And I've seen this, bro. You know, I've seen them. Uh, you know, they would say that they're speaking to this jinn, they're speaking to that jinn, they, they, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. And people will, will come with different problems and try to get the magician to deal with that issue. So if you have a court case or if you have an exam or if you have any issue in your life, uh, maybe you, you, you're having an issue with uh, you can't have children or maybe you want to marry somebody. Any of these issues, these so-called magicians can fix it for you. But it's haram, bro, and it's shirk. And it's just fooling people. But people don't realize that when they get involved in these things, it takes you outside of Islam, bro. Does that make sense? Yeah. So this was kind of a very important point to me. And then when I came back from Sierra Leone to, to England, I spoke to my Libyan friend. And I said, look, you Muslims, you've got power. You know, I seen this happen. This Muslim gave me this thing and the policeman ran away and this other Muslim did this. And, and my friend said, no, 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 this is haram. This is shirk. What are you doing? And I'm like, well, I'm not a Muslim. He said, no, no, I, we believe it's true. We believe these things can happen, but it's haram in Islam. So I was like, what do you mean? So he sat me down and he showed me a video by Dr. Bilal Phillips. So that same night when I watched this lecture by Dr. Bilal Phillips, my friend gave me a copy of The Fortress of a Muslim. Yeah. You know, the small yeah, uh, yeah. book of du'as. Some of them are ayah from the Quran and some of them are hadith. Yes. Now we know that both are wahi, right? Of course. You know, Revelation. You know, and you know, but of course the Quran has, a, 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 has an extra status, right? Definitely, because it's kitab Allah, yeah? And I was saying to my friend, this is different. This one is different from this. Like, and, and he said, yeah, that's the Quran, that's the Hadith. And then I'll turn the page, I'd read that and I'd read. And every time the, the, the ayah from the Quran, I just felt that it's different, bro. And I'm reading it in English, bro. Right? So I got onto one ayah 
You mean and the transliteration or the translation? Translation and the transliteration. Okay. It's got the Arabic, the transliteration. And you just felt like it's different. And, 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 the, and the English, right? But even in the English, bro, I was like, this is different to that, right? And subhanAllah, bro, I, when I, um, I got to Surah Falak, right? And it speaks about, you know, those who are envious, they're blowing in knots, tying knots, yeah. you know, at the daybreak, etc. I, I started crying, bro, because... I'd witnessed this in Sierra Leone. Oh, I'd seen them rolling, literally, these Tawiz things with Sihar in. They were naked, bro. Uh, literally sat in the river, rolling the, the Sihar. Literally, sometimes they would do it at, like what I now know to be sunset time. And sometimes they do it at sunrise, bro. And they're making the Sihar and they're blowing, bro. SubhanAllah, I've seen it, bro. And that ayah was the one that really sealed it for me. I said, this is the protection from this. And that's when I started to put my iman now in this little book. So I moved it from the Taoist thing. And I started to now, this, this little book went everywhere with me, bro. I was just reading the du'as, all the du'as, everything. You know, and that became the protection. It's amazing. And yeah. do, do, do you know why I believe, for, for me personally as well, yeah. that I believe that this is amazing. For me, jinns and the unseen world is very amazing because it's kind of like a physical proof of Allah's existence. Mm. Do you know what I mean by that? I understand, yeah. It's, it's, it's a tangible proof of Allah's existence. Mm. It's something that you can actually experience where you think, okay, hang on a second. No one told me about this. I've got friends who are doctors. Mm. Yeah. And they're ac active doctors, bro. Proper mm. like doctors, right? They say, and and they've they've expressed to me like how. Uh, one of them was telling me he's like, bro, someone comes, I treat them, etc., and he says, but I know. This guy's a doctor. He says, but I know, this person's issue is not a medical issue. Subhanallah. He told me he goes, I know it. Yeah, yeah. He said like uh, he told me about an incident once where someone was sitting in front of him. He said, I just started reading Ayatul Kursi on my time. Subhanallah, subhanallah. And, 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 the, and the fact of the matter is, mm. as Muslims now, for non-Muslims, it may be like very new for them hearing this. As Muslims, obviously, we believe in an unseen world. Yeah. That there are these jinns, uh, this, other create, uh, this other creation. Allah, there's also a surah about in the Quran, mm. Surah Al-Jinn. Yeah. Um, this creation of... Um, Spirits, would you say? Spirits, yeah. Spirits, something yeah. like that. Some right? of them are believers in God. Some of them are shayateen. Yeah, the devils, etc. Yeah. And um, people have experiences yeah. like this, yeah. right? Bro, you know how many non-Muslims believe in this? Bro, it, you open a newspaper, there's horoscopes, there's mediums. Bro, you know, the, the literally, they have concerts, not concerts, but like events at like stadiums, bro. They fill out like the MEN Arena in Manchester. Like what, fifty thousand, sixty thousand people, right? With mediums, where the, you have fifty, sixty thousand people come in, because they believe that this individual is can contact their dead relative. And this is the thing. See, but they contact in the gin. From from a dawa perspective <laughs> yeah. now, this is like an actual thing mm. that led you to Islam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and this is amazing because, mm. as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. In the Quran, in the Quran, right? Um, that's actually the introduction for your podcast. <laughs> I just I just remembered that. But um SubhanAllah, it's Allah that guides people. Mm. And Allah's methods of guiding people are different. Mm. One guy is in yeah. the club, he's guided. Yeah. One guy he's drunk and he's guided mm. through his drinking. Mm. So one guy he experiences magic mm. like yourself. Yeah. He's guided. Yeah. One guy he reads the Quran and he's mm. guided. Allah mm. guides people in mm. very different ways. Yeah. Right? Bro, I think there's a massive gap in the dawah, giving dawah yeah. about the unseen. Yeah. I'm telling you, bro, because they're halfway there, right? They already believe in yeah. something that's unseen. Yeah. They're they're seeking contentment because they've lost a loved one, a mother, an uncle, a brother. A loved one, whatever it may be, right? And they go to these mediums, bro. Do you know how big this is? It's huge. It's huge. They go to these mediums. This even on TV, By the bro. Way, people think that it's only Pakistanis, no, uh, bro, the white Asians, Middle Eastern people who are involved in this. Bro, there's white people doing this. Bro, there's millions of white people doing this, bro. Where they go to these mediums, what do they call it? They, some of them uh, famous uh, mediums. They have them on TV, bro. Where they're basically 
They're fooling them to believe that they're in contact with their dead ones. But in fact, the, the dead ones, usually it's the jinn, no information about their dead ones. So the jinn will communicate with the medium and say, oh, uh, you know, I used to like the, this special food that my mom used to cook for me. So then the medium will say, oh, yeah, he used to cook a special food for you, it's like a special pie or something, right? Well, only you know, right? And in fact, it's shaitan tricking you to believe that, he, that this medium is in touch with the, your dead uncle. Once you're dead, you're dead. There's no way of communicating with someone who's dead. So these mediums are communicating with the spirits who are around us every single day. They're around us and they know. You know, you know information about me because you're my friend, you're one of my companions. The jinn's here listening. So anyone who doesn't know the unseen world, doesn't know how it works, they're, they're susceptible and to this be tricked. Is the thing. You know, Surah Al Jinn in the beginning is amazing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim, bismillah rahman rahim. Qul uhiya ilayya annahu stama'a nafarun min al jinni faqalu inna sami'na qur'anan ajaba. That this group of jinn they heard the recitation of the Qur'an mm. and how did they describe it? Qur'an and Ajaba this is Anjib it's it's strange about the Qur'an they're saying mm. that right? and the the jinns themselves in the surah what do they say? وَأَنَّهُ كَانَ رِجَالٌ مِنَ الْجِنِّ يَعُوذُونَ بِرِجَالٍ مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَأَنَّهُمْ ظَنُّوا كَمَا ظَنَنْتُ وَأَنَّهُمْ ظَنُّوا أَنْ لَنْ يَبْعَثَ اللَّهُ The ayah is وَأَنَّا ظَنَنَّا أَنْ لَنْ تَقُولَ الْإِنسُ وَالْجِنُّ عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا That they're saying that we never thought We never thought that the jinns and the mankind are going to say about Allah a lie We never it's thought that and, and it's amazing because when you, when you read in mm. the Qur'an The interactions, right uh, the j jinns are mentioned in the mm. Quran, right? Throughout the Quran, mm. they mentioned in the Quran as another creation. Yeah. Right? That Allah's created the ints, yeah. which is us, mankind, mm. and the jinn kind, mm. right? And it's amazing, bro. I mean, I think we could bro, speak about bro, this. You know, I I, I want to stick on this subject just for a few more minutes okay. because, bro, it, I just find it amazing that you actually asked me about this today. Yeah. Because, look, I, I'll be honest with you, I've had different stages in my life. As I said, before Islam, I had this experience. And also, uh, a couple of years ago, I had some issues with uh, certain individuals where I had to help someone with Rukia. Yes. And subhanAllah, bro, um, actually being involved, helping someone with Rukia and interacting, like trying to help somebody, curing someone with the words of Allah, the Quran, it's a very powerful experience, bro. It just boosts your iman. And recently, the past two weeks, I've had a lot of um, people come to me. I had a, a brother um, who was seeking some help from Rukia. And he said that he went to this sheikh and the sheikh's speaking to the jinn and, and the, he's trying to find out the issue. And I said, brother, you can't do this. You know, he explained the process that he was trying to help this person. And he'd gone to... Uh, you know, a sheikh who is not doing it in the correct way. He's not doing rukya in the correct correct way. In fact, this particular person is actually doing sihr as well. Magic. Yeah. So it's so important that if you do have problems, mm. of course, first of all, you seek the the physical uh, help, right? You go to the doctors if you have aches and pains, things like that. You don't always presume it's uh, it's it's jinn. But at the same time, don't outline it. I asked a question to Tim Humble, and I thought he, his answer was on point, bro. I said to the Sheikh, I said, Sheikh, how do you differentiate between sihr and mental health? He said, it doesn't matter. He said, the cure is the same. He said, you don't need to know. He said, recite the Quran, the cure is the same. Allahu Akbar. I'm like, subhanAllah, That's Sheikh, actually that so was deep. deep. <laughs> I, it's on my podcast, right? Yeah. I was like, mashallah. You know? exactly deep, yeah. Like people like Oh this that It's that It doesn't matter It doesn't matter The mm. cure is the same The Quran is going to help you Even if you're mentally ill And it's going to help you If you've got 
Sihr or jinn? And we believe this. Yeah, subhanAllah. And so, we believe this. But I think it's interesting. The Quran is a shifa, yeah, it's a cure. Definitely. Um, and no doubt, no Muslim should doubt that and can doubt that. Seriously. Um, but one thing, um, so the whole reason I brought this topic up, yeah. that I wanted to speak to you about this topic, is is, is what one, well, one of the reasons that we derived is that Allah guides people through different means, right? Yeah. But I also wanted to introduce you to our, our, our viewership. Right yeah. about view, uh, our viewership of yeah. of your background, etc. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to ask you a question. What do you feel like is the most important thing in Dawah, calling people to Islam? What do you think the most important thing is? The most important thing, yeah, right, is hundred percent. I believe, right, more than ikhlas. Is you have to understand that only Allah can guide, bro. Mm. Only Allah can guide. If you think that yeah. you are guiding someone or that someone is becoming uh, ex accepting Islam because of you or that it's purely from Allah bro and it's also obviously that includes ikhlas as well because you're having full sincerity once you truly understand that it, they, they're only going to be guided with the permission of Allah you know then I feel that how can you not be sincere bro I know that sounds a bit like oh that's a bit of a big statement but people like and I don't want it to sound like Shaitan's uh, tricking me, thinking, "Oh, I'm not. I don't show off." I, everyone has problems with uh, intentions, intentions yeah. and stuff. But realistically, bro, how can we show off when it's not us, bro? Like, really, I'm talking about when people accept Islam. You know, people people say, "Oh, how many shahadas you had?" I said, "I don't even count shahadas. I don't think about that because it's not mine. Allah guides them." Do you know what I mean? I judge the success of my dawah by how many people I've told, how many people I've successfully conveyed the message to. Yes. The guidance isn't mine. It's nothing to do with me, you know. Yeah. So I think that's a really important point. And the other important point is doing dawah, understanding that you have to give dawah. You know, Allah mentions the, yeah. um, you know, that His way. He, he, Allah mentions uh, in Surah Yusuf about ordering the messenger. You know, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِ You know, عَدُوِنَ اللَّهِ عَلَىٰ بَصِيرًا You know, which is, you know, he orders the Messenger of Allah Say that my way is to invite to Allah with Basira, Mine and everyone who follows me Yeah, so it, if it's not enough just to be the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, It's also the people that follow him It's like that extra emphasis, right? And Ibn al-Qayyim, one of the scholars of Islam, he said Regarding this ayah that if you don't call to Allah with basira, you're not on the sabil. Mm. SubhanAllah. And that, when I heard that, that was like, I have to give dawah. You know, so you have to give dawah with uh, basira, which is insight, with yeah. truth, insight, you know. The Quran is look full of uh, dawah you do. gems, you, you know. Do, yeah. Um, but with knowledge as well yeah. Not just giving da'wah Give da'wah with knowledge With insight Calling to tawheed Calling to the oneness of Allah um, You know SubhanAllah And I with, mean, look, with manners bro 100%. With manners bro You know I like mashallah you've, you've really developed over the years And you know I, I see you as one of the brothers Who are really taking it A, a bit more seriously Than a lot of mm. other brothers um, And I like the way you've developed yourself And you know you, You're attached with with, with certain uh, students and scholars, etc. This is so important, bro. Yeah, and there's a lot of talk about this at the moment, you know, and I think it's so important that that people have to uh, give dawah with the correct manners. We spoke yeah. about at the beginning of the podcast with the, with the best manners, the best example. May Allah keep us yeah. sincere, bro. I mean, and, I mean, I mean, the Quran describes it, you know, amazingly. هو الذي بعث في الأميين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبَلُ لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينَ Right? That he is the one who وَالَّذِي بَعْثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ He sent basically the Prophet Sallallahu amongst the people who are illiterate people, yeah. Ummiyin mm. رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ from them yeah. يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ He would recite the verses upon them mm. وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ And he would purify them so first is reciting mm. the verses upon them and yeah. purifying them. Wa yu'allimuhum al-kitab and you teach them the book. Wa yu'allimuhum al-kitab wal hikma the sunnah. Yeah. Wa in kanu min qablu la fi dalal mubin. And before that, they were in clear misguidance, yeah. clear cut. That's it, bro. And 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 this, this is, is not the method. 
the, the, the Sahaba were not the only people. We, you were not born guided, nor was I. Mm. Before we reached this stage mm. of where we're sitting here, speaking about Islam, etc. Mm. We were in Dalali Mubin. We were in misguidance, bro. All of bro, us. I'm carrying an amulet. How can this thing protect me, bro? SubhanAllah. And this is the Islamic position on these things is that you can only seek protection from Allah, from exactly. God. Exactly. Right? Um, if protection from the unseen world and other things exists like this, mm. then surely the protection from yeah. the one above exists. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah, we spoke about you know, many you different know, this, things. You know, this, this uh, SubhanAllah, Surah Al-Jumma is, is SubhanAllah. Yeah. It also has a big place in my heart as well. It's a beautiful story. It is a big... It, I had... I don't dream much, bro. Mm. But I had a dream about this surah. And SubhanAllah is... Yeah, SubhanAllah. It's a very deep surah. It, it's it, one of my favorite surahs. It's... It's... um, It was quite profound. I don't know if you want to share the story. I mean, I don't know if you've got time. But... And it's to do with dawah. SubhanAllah. Look at that. I don't dream much, right? And one time I had this dream and I was sat in the masjid and... One of my main Dawa teachers from Manchester, he has uh, two children, three children now. But at the time, he had two children, and I was dream. I dreamt that I was sat in the masjid teaching his son Surah Juma. Right. So I'm thinking that's interesting because I never dream, right? So I phoned the brother up. I said I had a dream. I dreamt that I was in the masjid teaching your son Surah Juma. So he said, "Okay, read the surah, and you know maybe there's some something there." So I read the surah, of course, about Jumwa, you know, um, about the whole guidance thing. And then at the end, it speaks when the Adhan is called, leave your, subhanAllah, your businesses. Yeah. I thought that's what it is, subhanAllah. Every Friday at Jumwa, either, either me or this particular brother would go um, to another brother who has a, a business. And we would, he would give us maybe some donation like £10, £20 towards the dawah table, right? We would buy books and things like that or sweets and things. Yeah. Every Jumma I used to go and collect it, either me or the other brother. Yeah. So I said, SubhanAllah, you know what? This brother who gives us a donation, I've noticed that he's not been coming to Jumma. right? So I phoned the brother and I said, I think basically this dream is that I have to give dawah to the brother. You know the brother who we collect the money from? Mm. I think uh, I've noticed that he's not been going to Jumma and I've wanted to basically advise him, but I feel like, you know, I'm white, I'm a convert, he's gonna feel embarrassed, what do you know? And my friend, he said, you know what, SubhanAllah, you know this Jumma? He came, but he was late, he missed it. And he's seen my friend, you know, the one whose son I was teaching. Yeah. So during it. And he's seen uh, my friend, and he knows that my friend's seen him miss Jumma. But my friend is from the same ethnicity as him, right? Okay. So I told my friend, I said, I know what the advice is. The advice is not to embarrass him and say, why are you not going to Jumma? The advice is for you to go to him and tell him you have to be to Jumma on time. Because not going to Jumma at all, right? And you know, yeah. it's not as embarrassing for him, yeah. and plus, it's from his own ethnicity, etc. You know, it's like a peer, same age, etc. So, that was a very interesting point. That that particular surah for me, again, involving dawah, bro. That subhanallah, you know. the Quran is a book full of dawah. And if anyone yeah. wants to give dawah to themselves and to yeah. other people, they should connect themselves with the Quran. And um, subhanallah, I think that this podcast, bro. Uh, Honestly, I didn't expect it to be like to to take it that route, but it just went there automatically. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, uh, as I said, I didn't expect it. I've I've not. Spoke I didn't expect about, it. I can even show you my I've notes. I've not spoke about gin stuff yeah. for a long time, but it's interesting that this week uh, a lot of things have happened regarding this subject, and it's interesting you raised it. Um, but we, I ask Allah to make it easy for people who are having troubles in their life, people who are having troubles with with the unseen world. I also ask Allah to guide the people. Who are being duped and tricked by these evil people, you know? And the only way is to come back to the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet وسلم, on this topic, Allah because Allah. we have clear guidance about the unseen. Yeah. You know, in the books of Akida, right? When it comes to the the the, the, the unseen world, the the books are like 
there's loads of them, right? Because there's so much information about the grave, uh, Judgment Day, Jahannam, Jannah, you know, subhanAllah, that we have a lot of knowledge about the unseen world, knowledge that has been forgotten from the previous prophets. We don't have it anymore. You know, the, the, the Old Testament don't even speak about uh, Jahannam. SubhanAllah. They don't even believe in it, bro. <laughs> SubhanAllah. So, you know, Crazy. Islam has the full guidance that Allah has revealed to us. And that's where you're going to find find the truth. May Allah Shama. guide us all. I mean, what else was you going to speak about? We're not going to have time, but I'm interested to see your notes. I was just going to speak to you about um, Africa, Dawah in Africa, yeah. and we'll stuff like that. We'll do it next time, inshallah. Definitely, man. Inshallah. 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 If there is one. Inshallah. Jazakallah. Take care of yourself, bro. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Dum, 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 dum. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, check it out. And you, young Smurfs, one minute, one minute, one minute. Assalamu alaikum wa Don't forget to. Uh, just is gone but I'm oh. just going to say you need to give a shout out to the Young Smirks podcast make sure you tune in and uh, be there Salam. <laughs> 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 <laughs>